College students need to be introduced to fiction like cats need to be introduced to catnip. Am I right? You already know what this is. And like cats, some of you go crazy for this stuff and others sniff at it and go on your way. But none of you need to be told what fiction is. Fiction is true and nonfiction is not true. Wait! It's the other way around. Fiction is not true and nonfiction is true. Why is that so easy to get mixed up? Fictional stories are not actual events. They are made up. They are pretend. Stories can come entirely from the author's imagination, but usually it's based in a context that's true-ish. So the characters may be fictional, but the setting is a real place, like Tom Sawyer's Deep South is real. Or the events in the story actually happened, like the Titanic really sank, but the story around the characters is made up. Other times, everything is an entirely made up. J.R.R. Tolkien even invented a language for the creatures of his Lord of the Rings trilogy. But that's just the basics. You knew that. Let's go a little deeper. In ancient times, cats were worshipped as gods, a fact that they have not forgotten, so perhaps they don't need to contemplate catnip. But college students do not have the luxury of divinity. You weren't around when fiction was invented. And it was invented. I suppose people have been telling stories as long as they knew how to put sentences together, but they haven't been writing novels since the dawn of time. The printing press marked the beginning of a new way of perceiving literature. Literacy had been around for only the elite, but suddenly it became accessible to everyone. And as writing became commonplace, published works morphed from didactic to creative, first as epic poems, then as plays, and finally as novels. Some call Cervantes' Don Quixote de la Mancha the first novel, which was published in 1605. Since then, we've had Jane Austen, Herman Melville, George Orwell, John Steinbeck, and so many others who have made this genre great. Libraries are full of all this classic fiction, and much of it is in the public domain, so it can also be downloaded for free to your smartphone and uploaded for free to your smart brains. Other subgenres have also developed. There's suspense fiction like crime and detective stories, thrillers, mystery thrillers, legal thrillers, tragedy, westerns, historical fiction, women's fiction, fantasy, science fiction, literary fiction, fairy tales, the list goes on. Fiction comes in different lengths as well. Short stories can be as few as 50 words. Some would argue they may be told in 140 characters or less. They are usually not longer than 8,000 words. The novella is between 10,000 and 45,000 words, and novels are usually over 60,000. But today's preference is really even more than that, 100,000, 150,000, sometimes even longer. What's the difference between novels and short stories besides length? Is a short story just a little shrunken down novel? Nope, they are completely different art forms made out of the same material. Like a car, an airplane, and a boat are all made of the same materials and they all travel. So while they're related, they are still distinct things. Novels have an underlying linear structure, even if the prose and expression of that structure is not linear. But the short story is all about that single moment of change and it gives the information the reader needs to realize that moment. Whatever its form, fiction has the power to transform its readers. I've never experienced catnip, but I suspect that reading fiction brings us to an even higher state of being than catnip does. We get to experience places and people and ideas that we otherwise might never have known. Some have argued against fiction. Don't read that stuff, they tell young people. It's not true and therefore not useful. Some would even say it's harmful. But others, including Ralph Waldo Emerson, see its value. Fiction reveals truth that reality obscures, he says. Tim O'Brien goes on to explain, It's for getting at the truth, 
when the truth isn't sufficient for the truth. So that's an introduction to fiction. If we were to continue, we would study literary devices, ways to analyze literature, etc. But the best way, of course, to understand this genre is to read. So put your slippers on, sink into the couch, and enjoy a good book.